rain vlog. <laughs> Might as well do it, no? Yeah, if you're thinking, what is she on about with all these rain videos? Well, it is so unusual for us here to have mild temperatures where my orchids can be outside and get rained on during the month of December. That is why I'm doing this. I feel like a tourist in my own country. <laughs> I remember the drought of 96 and the first time it rained afterwards, there was a six year drought and the kids that only were like six years old, they had never seen rain before. So they grew up during that drought period. The first time it rained, they were outside experiencing rain for the first time. Just like if you would think that somebody has never seen snow before and experiences snow for the first time. It was a fun, fun party on the streets when it rained after six years here in southern Spain. Now, that has not been the case recently, but the dams are so empty that even all the rain that we've had and that is still coming is so far only at the point of saturating the ground level in order to then start filling up. That's how bad it was. My daughter was up in the Chiclana area on the Atlantic side of the Iberian Peninsula of Spain and she said that there's a you know we have a huge dam you cross a natural lake like bridge thing it's gorgeous that was all dry when she last went there and I thought well that's dangerous and that has a lot of filling up to do before anything let's say hazardous were to happen now that's not to say that the water hasn't burst its banks because of the wind yeah we have had, I would say, the rain wasn't the problem. It was the wind that was pushing the water into certain areas where it doesn't belong, especially into my home. When the wind was howling against the building from the north side, <laughs> that is where my front door is. So we've been playing Tetris with towels, with some sandbags, getting my architecture skills honed in to make some barriers. It wasn't too bad. At least it didn't reach the living room area where there is a carpet. Meanwhile, it's a carpet. Let's just say it's not something that's going to hurt. If it were ever to leave the house, it will probably enhance the home. But yeah, we have come through it for now. It's like the eye in the storm right now. There's more to come. And I thought I would fire the camera up again and show you what I'm doing because... <laughs> I'm able to peel, fuss, and primp, primp around with my orchids, especially when it comes to this orchid, which is Coilostylus or Epidendrum ciliare, variety or steadii. This orchid has the stickiest, stickiest happy sap. It's like glue, and taking off the sheaths around the growths is very, very difficult without doing damage. But now that it's been in the rain, a warm to hot grower in Spain has been rained on for the past three days, day and night. I have a great opportunity to get in there and at least remove some. That's why I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this and I'll talk to you at the same time because that's what I've been doing all morning in the Blooming Alley area where I have moved the warm to hot growers inside now. Even though tonight the temperatures may be a little bit mild, huh? Tomorrow morning, we have an hour or two where the temperatures will drop to 12 degrees Celsius. And I thought, no, I'm not going to risk it. Now, the whole thing is as well, kind of works. Those are inside now. I've got this empty shelf here because if it continues or starts raining again, I can continue fussing with my orchids in this shelf area <laughs> and make a massive mess on the floor. Ugh, the whole patio is a mess at the moment. Everything is everywhere, but there's no point in tidying anything up because it's just going to continue tonight. But yeah, so I thought this is a great place to come, get rid of my sheaths and bring the warm to hot growers in. And I'm not doing this with all the orchids. Some will have their sheaths still on them, but this one, because it's such a headache, <laughs> I thought this is perfect. Even I have to make sure that I'm not losing any growths. This one's acclimated pretty well, but you never know, right? It didn't appreciate the cold I exposed it to in the beginning of the year. You can see that cold damage there. I got a little bit fed up with my marathon orchid shuffle and left it out one night. And yeah, I didn't appreciate that. So I got to be a bit careful. But now that everything is a bit damp, you can hear maybe still the crunch of the sheaths around these pseudobulbs. That is how 
tough they are after all this rain. They're not even wet, wet. Incredible. I've got 93% humidity at the moment, and these sheaths aren't even wet. There's still a bit of crunch to them. So how have you been doing? Let me know in the comments. I just want to have a little quick chat, do my little rain vlog while I've got it. Cabin fever is a thing, promise, trust me. Even the animals are feeling it. The grow space is in perpetual darkness, so it was nice to get some light on these orchids, whether it was bright light, I don't mind. It is much, much brighter out here than it is in the grow space. The fowls I am dithering with. The fowls, they are still outside. So I've been umming and eyeing. I was wondering, you know, should I bring them in now? They'll be soaking wet. There's no airflow in the grow space at all. I've got the terrace door cracked open a little bit, just for a little bit of a refresher of the air. But I've also got angrecoid spikes, which are starting to show buds. Eh, we would like to have some of those Christmas stars, don't we? At least to show for. Trying to avoid bud blast as well on my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. Some buds are opening, but yeah. If we're going to be facing a challenge, the little rewards that we can get, we might as well try and protect them and, you know, enjoy them when the time comes. But here's the thing with the fowls. Talk about drenched. Drenched, drenched, soaked, saturated to the core. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. But this shelf is also now empty, so I'm thinking of putting some of the fowls over here and let them sort of dry out a little bit with the breeze, if that's even possible, with 93% humidity. But, you know, get them away from the next bout of rain that we're going to have. Huh. That's what I'm going to do with some of them. You see there's a little bit of a breeze going. It's not as blowy and stormy as it was yesterday, but a little bit of a breeze nonetheless. And I've been cleaning masks. <laughs> Whenever the rain abated a little bit, I've been going outside, grab myself another set of masks that look nasty so that they can fill up with rain that is somewhat clean. I've got a lot of tannin in the water on some of my masks, but everything like this mask down here, this one is now shiny, white, nice and clean. So let's go and have a look around and uh, yeah, before I take Orsteriae inside, that was nice. It was nice to get to these sheaths around here. There's another one in the middle there. I mean, it's not like there's a problem with them. I could leave them. <laughs> but Catlia's winter, if there's a little bit of warmth, humidity, if there's the sticky residue of happy sap, I need to know the difference. In case scale wants to manifest itself, I won't be able to tell the difference. Now, with these sheaths gone, I've got a better visual of whether my plant is going to stay pest-free or if something is trying to settle down as the winter gets a little bit harsher because temperatures will be dropping. Sorry for the darkness. <laughs> Keeping it real here. Let's go and have a look at what else has been happening. Show you my full masks. So those are the masks of my Schomborkias or Mimocopilas. I've got the Tivisinas to the right down there. I just emptied them out. I had my strainer out there, so my bucket over here is kind of full. I used that this morning just to make sure that my Rapiculus Lelius weren't drying out completely. Yes, they're not in the rain, but they shouldn't go completely dry this time of year either, so I used some of that water emptied out any dirty water like it is good rain water but you know with a little bit of a strainer seeing as I do use a spray a lot and I have cleaned most of the masks this one astonishingly was clean already two weeks ago but you know there's always some residue and here you can see that starting to fill up with more water as it comes <laughs> with clean masks. So these orchids all have to come inside today. There you go, you see this is the mask that's been out longest. I can empty that out and everybody else is filling up with clean water. It's been a dash, a clean, a put it out again and try to stay as dry as possible. Here we have some more. Yep, there's a leaf in there from my Schweinfurtianum, but clean water. That's important because my RO system is packing up 
again. So I'm very fortunate that I've got all this rain coming, but should something happen, all the water that I've collected now will only last me for about four or five days in case, let's say, it gets really warm and dry again. And that would be Baloo, Furball. Anyway, so let's look at the Phalaenopsis if you're so inclined to still join me. The wind was so bad the other day at night, I was so scared. Even though my Schomburgia in its bowl, sorry, Myrmacophila in its bowl is a heavy orchid, I freaked out. So I went out in the pouring rain and brought her down to a lower shelf where she won't blow over. It was, I mean, seriously, it was really bad. Even the dogs were having a little bit of a bark here and there because the noises were <clears throat> unusual, let's just say. Completely drenched, <laughs> saturated. <laughs> drenched is not even a word. Oh, anything. Anyway, full. If they aren't wet to their stem, then I don't know what else it's going to take. I love it. I like the look of it. Now the gamble begins. These two right here live in their best life. Dendrobium Victoria Regina, Stan the man. And then I wanted to show you as well who's been doing really well. Haven't seen them for a long time. This is my Tolumbia Hawksonium. Look at this unusual to be able to do this with her this time of year. Look at all those lovely roots taking up that rainwater and look at the front. I know, algae, it's messy, but her growth, look at that. She's absolutely loving it. Check that out, new growth there, new growth coming, new growth there. The amount of rain obviously is extreme, very extreme, but the amount of airflow has also been extreme. Now, I try to hang her in such a way that I don't huh, damage the roots. That's better. Anyway, well, let me show you another mask just because of the difference of water quality depending on where I've placed the masks and where I had space and where they wouldn't blow around the patio and break. Look at this. Incredible, huh? This is the mask from my Colmenara Masai Red, and I cleaned it out, and I always take out the debris, but after two days of water coming from the hedge, the clear water has turned and shows the tannin in that water. So I will need to dilute this down before I use it on the orchids, because that is a lot of tannin. It's good stuff, but yeah, it's not dirty, because there's nothing settling in the bottom apart from little twigs and debris but I thought this was super interesting based on its location right up against the hedge. I found that super strange. That has to be diluted at least one parts of this to three parts of normal water. That is far too strong. This is insane. This doesn't happen in my country. <laughs> I've never had my two huge buckets, like the storage buckets I have for my RO water, full of rainwater within a couple of days. That doesn't happen when I collect water. Normally, if I'm lucky, it'll get to about a quarter. But the quantity we have had, this is the result. And not only that, because look at all these. Look, full. All my masks that I cleaned, I put here on the east side where there was space. And yes, I could have more of my masks here but it was easier to dash in and out of the blooming alley to the west side in between rain showers and not come all the way to the east side. So yeah, here are my clean masks where you can see no debris has fallen into it because it's open sky above. There are no shrubs, nothing like that. Even the wind brought a little bit, but this is clean, fresh rainwater, except for over there. Don't know if you want to have a look at what's going on in there, but <laughs> it sure is interesting. You see the difference though? You can still fill up this one. And oh, I'm just so thrilled. These are the Phalaenopsis masks for the most part, so I can fill up the water and yeah, put the Phalaenopsis into the blooming alley. But let's go check out that mask. I don't know. I just find all of this fun. This is novel to me, in case I haven't said it before. <laughs> So this is the Cymbidium mask, the Cymbidium being right over there. And look at that. Now, I have not poured this water out to clean the mask completely. So yes, there was some sediment at the bottom of the mask when I then put it up on the table. The reason being, I'm always taking out off the top, off the top, and the moment I touch the water too deeply, that sediment starts to rise and muddy the water, so to speak. I don't want that. 
But there's some little creatures, little earthy, whatever they do. I have no idea. Microscopic, but they're drawing little lines inside. I don't know about you, but this is stuff that fascinates me. It reminds me of when I was a child on the reef, on the coast of Kenya. Out there on the reef exploring, I would find all these weird things that were all mysterious to me. And this is what it reminds me of, looking at a pool of water on the reef, crystal clear, and then you see all the living organisms in there. I love it. But yeah, this water is clean and I keep straining from the top of it. And I, like I said, I always use a strainer. So I'm not inclined to disturb this water too much, but I will use it, of course. <laughs> and here's my odd little Neo, living its best life, totally saturated, starting to bloom nicely in its weird own funky little way. <laughs> when it's sunny, I have to do a video on this one just to show you what's going on because it's kind of interesting to see. I've got more spikes coming right here. So thank you for joining me on my little rain vlog today. I appreciate your time. Hope you had a little bit of fun looking around with me. A chuckle here and there because I'm finding the whole this rain business. <laughs> Just like those children back in the day that had their first rain experience in 1996. That's me. I love it. Have yourselves a fabulous day though on one condition that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.